I personally think that people spend a lot longer on introductions on YouTube than are necessary. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly two things. Number one, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Valhazia server for modded Minecraft entirely by yourself, dedicated just for you and your friends. And then secondly, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about what you can do if you don't think that your computer can quite handle the resource intensiveness of a server and running the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. So let's get into it. Since this video has no sponsor, I wanted to take a quick second to tell you a little bit about a project that I've been working on. Every single video on my YouTube channel that has done even remotely well has either been centered around my home lab or around Minecraft. And because of that, I started thinking, what could I do to combine these two subjects and provide something to you, the viewer, that would actually be valuable? The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it could potentially be relatively difficult for somebody to run both a dedicated server and the client side of a mod pack at the exact same time. And so I realized I already have the hardware thanks to my home lab to be able to run a whole bunch of these servers at the same time. So why not set them up and just let you guys use them? I currently have my main vanilla server and 15 modded Minecraft servers up and running right now. But by the end of this, I plan to have well over 150 total servers running at once. The goal of this project is simply to allow friends to be able to play with each other on a server without one of them having to take the incredible performance hit of actually having to run that server for themselves. Again, this is totally free, so please feel free to share the server information with whoever you think might actually use it. Okay, back to the video. Step number one in installing any sort of dedicated server is getting the server files. The easiest way to do that for Valhasia is by downloading a program called Curse Forge. Easiest way to download CurseForge is by going to Google and searching for CurseForge. It's going to be the first link that you have up here. This link will also be down in the description below. All you have to do is click the download button right here. It will download CurseForge and you can install it. I already have it installed, so we'll skip over that part. Once you have CurseForge installed, if you open it up, you're going to usually see something like this. You won't have the mod packs that I have in here right now saved, but you can go to browse mod packs and then you can search for Valhasia. For this particular one, we're going to be doing Valhasia 3. So if you click on Valhasia 3, in between the three dots and the play button, there's going to be a little icon in here that you use for downloading the server pack. So we're going to click that and it's going to open up a new window and then start to download the files. I would highly recommend putting these files in their own folder as if you start setting up more than one uh, modded Minecraft server, it can get really cluttered very quickly. And so having some sort of folder structure to organize everything can be important. So once you have all of the data downloaded, go ahead and copy that information and then paste it in the folder that you just created. I have had a Valhazia server on here before, so I went ahead and saved that information under the old folder. You will have everything but that folder uh, when you download your server pack. All right, so once you've got to this point, the next step is going to be to install Java. Now for this particular mod pack, I believe we're gonna need Java 11. The easiest way to do that is literally just to go to Chrome again and search for Java 11 download. Okay, so now that we have Java installed, we should be able to come back here, double click the server start. Perfect, so once you have everything in the fold, you're gonna see a batch script down here that's called server start. So we're gonna go ahead and double click that and that should start everything up. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna start downloading everything else that you need for the server to run. It's gonna be a lot of just the mod packs, things like that. It's also gonna download uh, the Mojang end user license agreement, which you'll have to accept prior to actually running the server. You'll know this is done uh, when you can click, press any key to continue and then it'll close itself out. So next, what we need to do is we're gonna run it again and it's going to actually try to start the server up this time. And it should actually start the server up just like this. So from here, it's actually starting to like install everything, create everything, make the world, uh, put together your server properties folder, uh, everything like that. Uh, so like it says here, you'll need to accept the Mojang end user license agreement, which is a file that gets created by that last step. Um, so you'll create it, you'll come in here, uh, you'll change the false to true, you'll save it, close out of it, and then you can run it again. Uh, what I would like to do first is change a couple things in the server properties file. Um, I particularly like to lower my max players to eight. Uh, it's also important to note the the, the port that your, your server's running on. We will talk a little bit about that later uh, in regards to port forwarding. And then I like to change this, which is the subtext underneath the title that the user sets for the multiplayer server. I like to set it to John's server just so people know that it's mine. So we'll save that and then we will click the server start again. And this is actually gonna start your server up for the first time. So 
after this point, you will be able to join your server. So once this finishes running, your friends that are um, not on your local network won't actually be able to join it yet because you'll have to, like we just talked about, do port forwarding on your router. And I really wish that there was just some simple way to, to like say, hey, follow these steps and then this will do it for everybody, right? There's really not. And, and the reason for that is because everybody's got a different router and every set of steps for each router is different to accomplish that goal. So what I would highly recommend doing is doing a Google search or search on YouTube to try to find a video uh, for how to port forward for your specific router, follow those steps for port 25565, and then that'll set up port forwarding um, for Minecraft for the server. So now you've got the server running, it's starting up right now for us. If you get port forwarding done, then all your friends will have to do is also download CurseForge, the same steps that we went through before, but instead of having to click the button between the dots and, pl uh, and install, they will just have to click the install button and then the play button in order to open up the server uh, and, and, and play on it. The only other thing that they will need once you have port forwarding set up is your public IP address, which will allow them to join your server. The public IP address is incredibly easy to find. All you have to do is go to the computer that the server is running on and type in, in Chrome or Firefox, what is my public IP? And the first link there will almost always tell you exactly what it is. So you can copy that, send it as a Discord message, send it over text, whatever you need to do for your public IP to get that to your friends. And that's what they'll put in the address on the Minecraft multiplayer server. So there you have it. We have a working server. You've set up port forwarding. Your friends have the instructions for how to set up their modded Minecraft clients so that they can join your server through your public IP. The only thing that I would always recommend doing is making yourself a server operator on a server that you're running. And in order to do that, all you have to do is do forward slash OP space whatever your username is in Minecraft. And there you go. I'm now a server operator on here. I can make decisions for how I want the server to operate and how we want it to run. So there you have it. You have a working Valhasia server. Your friends can join it and you can play together with them on it. Now, again, like we talked about earlier, if you find yourself in the position where you can't actually run a full fledged server and your client at the same time to be able to play on your server, I would strongly recommend clicking the link down in the description below to go to my discord. We have a free Valhasia server that you can, your friends can join at any point in time. We maintain it. We update it. We make sure everything's working well on it. If you have any questions about that, feel free to leave them in the comments or again, join the discord and ask me. So far, I've managed to answer all the questions that have been on any of my YouTube videos, especially the technical ones. I try to give you as detailed an answer as possible so you guys can have your server set up as quickly as possible and be able to play with your friends as stress-free and as frustration-free as possible. Clearly, by the fact that you're still here, you enjoyed the video at least a little bit. So feel free to hit the subscribe button, like the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.